Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Tech, and in today's video what we have here is we have iOS 15 hands-on. It is running on this iPhone right here. If I go to my settings, and if I go to my software update, you'll see that we have iOS 15.0 available on this phone. And in this video, we are going to be going over all the new feature iOS 15 brings to the table, especially the top new features. Let's dive in and get started right away. And I do want to let you know real quick, iOS 15, when it is available to the public, is going to be compatible with the following phones. You can watch and read the whole thing. Now, one thing I'm going to talk about quickly in the very beginning is a powerful feature known as the live text feature. Now, this feature uses uh, on-device intelligence, okay? So let me launch a photo. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this is a brand new feature. So here's a photo or two photos that we have. On the photos, we have a bunch of text, okay? Now with the on-device intelligence, when you take a photo of, or if you have an existing photo, you can simply select the text on the photo, okay? So look at this. Let's say I wanna select some of this text right here. All I do is press and hold and start to select the text. And it's gonna read the text. I can copy that text. Let me just go to the notes application, for example. Okay, uh, notes application, and if I tap over here, I can paste that text from the photo straight into anywhere, all right? So you can use this in classrooms, you can do it for photos. Uh, again, if I had a photo that had a phone number right here, it would recognize that phone number, and I can tap on that number to make a call. So that's a brand new feature. It's known as the live text in the photos application. All right, so let's dive in and get started. Now we do have updates to FaceTime, focus features, enhanced on-device intelligence, and so much more, and a bunch of app redesigns. So let's get started initially with the brand new focus mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down my notifications panel, I'm sorry, my control center right over here, okay? So here, instead of do not disturb, now you're gonna see the focus mode. Now when I press and hold this, it's gonna expand and it's gonna give you the option to stay focused on what's important. Now your old do not disturb is still gonna be here and it's gonna work just the way it worked before. You click this, it activates do not disturb. It works the same way as before, but as I, as I said, we now have these new focus elements right here, 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 and here. So basically, if I tap on the sleep focus, it's going to give me these options right here. So basically when I activate this mode, all these things are going to happen, okay? I'm gonna X this out for now, uh, but when we go into the settings, by the way, you can access the focus mode from the settings. So when you go to your settings, instead of saying do not disturb, it now says focus, and again, you can tap into personal, sleep, and work, and you do have to go in there and individually set up every single one of these modes and customize it to your lifestyle. So that is the brand new focus mode. Now if you look over here, we also have the focus status and phone calls. If I tap on focus status, if somebody tries to send you a message or, or call you, uh, you can actually set a focus status that's going to let the other person know that you are in fact busy in a certain focus mode. You can click on plus and create your custom focus modes if you so desire. They even have it for driving, fitness, gaming, reading, you get the idea. So that's one of the major new features, can be accessed from here, and also can be accessed right from here. Press and hold, I'm sorry, not that one. Uh, press and hold right here, and you get the expanded capabilities right here. Alrighty, let's move on to the next thing. The next update has to do with Safari. So Safari does get a new design that makes controls easier to reach. I'm gonna quickly launch this, okay? So here we have a tab. You'll notice at the bottom, we have these uh, this little control panel just, just floating about. If I were to scroll down, it merges down and make sure that you get the maximum viewing right here. But if, again, if I go up a little bit, it will come up and you can use this. I can tap over here uh, to access new tabs if I want, okay? Or I can switch between tabs from this menu. I can also swipe over to the next tab right through this control panel that is normally floating. Again, if I move it, it merges away, okay? So that's great. And then I have this button here that I can tap. It's gonna give me all the usual uh, sharing options as you can see. 
So that's fantastic. And I do wanna let you know, iOS Safari web browser is now going to be accepting extensions that were previously only available on Mac OS's Safari. Hard to demonstrate that one, but just something you should be aware of. Let's move on to the next feature. Now we do have a brand new weather app and a brand new notes application. Let me show you what those are all about. So if I launch the weather application, okay, uh, everything's simply gonna be better. The animations are gonna be superior, okay? And if you scroll down on the weather application, you are gonna notice that there is much more detail about that particular location that we are looking at. So humidity, uh, you know, visibility, pressure, all that stuff is all uh, bundled at the bottom here. So it is much more detailed and better than the old application. Let me just swipe over, see what else is happening. So uh, most of the places I'm going are a little bit, you know, sunny and stuff, but look, look at that. So we got that sun icon here, over here. Uh, in Kansas, a little bit cloudy, but it's still sunny. So you get all these new animations. But again, the big thing is the redesign over here. And of course, at the bottom, let me see. For that one, we don't have it. There we go. You know, this one I like. So in New York, it's raining. So we have a nice rain animation, as you can see. So all that stuff is new and updated, all right? And including this stuff. So that's the weather application. Now the notes application also has been redesigned, but there's also some new features in it that I wanna talk about. It's not a major update. We have some new features in there. So I'm gonna launch this guy right here, okay? So for example, let me just go into this video right over here, into this note I mean right over here. And what I can do now is I can go over here and I can add tags to my notes, okay? So let's just say example, okay? And I can also add as many as I want, okay? Uh, I, whatever, just an example over here. So I can add these tags, and once I add the tags, I can go back out, and I can actually search the notes using those tags. So let's just go for this. Let's just type in I. So it says, there we have the match right there. So I can tag all my notes inside the notes anywhere, as many tags that I want. And one more big thing is, uh, when you share a note with somebody, okay, let me just sh share this note with somebody uh, from my from my uh, contacts. Once you share that, you actually get a list of what happened during the shared note because when you share a note, the other person can make modifications and you can see all the history of what has been done. So that's the new notes application. A few improvements here and there. Now we do have some updates to the notification panel. It's not a huge striking update, but if I pull this down, you're gonna see a bunch of notifications and when I do get a text message from people in my contacts that have a photo, uh, it's gonna appear right here. And basically the icons that show up here are gonna be larger for enhanced viewing. There's also gonna be something known as app collections that is going to collect all the non-important notifications into a bundle. Uh, it hasn't happened so far here. Uh, but that's something you're gonna see. So it's gonna be a big bundle. And when you tap it, it's gonna expand and show you a bunch of low priority applications bundled together. But when you get a text message or any big notifications, they're still gonna be on the top as usual with the slightly new design. Again, nothing dramatic happening over here. Let's move on. Now there is gonna be some changes with the FaceTime application. Let me launch the application. So we have the application right here. Uh, one of the biggest things is you can actually create a link. So here's an option, you create a link, and this is gonna be kind of like a meeting. So you can add a bunch of names into this link, and you can share it with a bunch of your contacts, and then that link can be accessed by anybody, and they can join in into your FaceTime call. So this way you can schedule meetings and stuff like that. Now it's gonna be a little bit hard to demonstrate, but what we have here in the new powerful share play feature. So basically, while you are on a FaceTime call with your contacts, what you can do is using share play, you can listen to music together, watch TV shows or movies, in complete sync, or you can share your device's screen while you're having a FaceTime conversation. So that's the way that FaceTime is improved, the link functionality and the share play function that allows you to do things together right on FaceTime. Now there's an update to Spotlight. So when I bring down the Spotlight, and if I were to search for somebody famous, like this guy right here, uh, you'll notice that we have some extra information. Let me just see. So let's say I was searching for him, I click on him, 
and I get a lot of extra information in regards to that actor, uh, images, official website, suggested websites, blah, blah, blah. And if I go down again I'm in, to the up, you get all this personal information. And the same thing is going to happen for contacts in your phone. All their information is going to show up here based on the kind of information you actually included in your phone for them. Okay, so that's one thing with the spotlight search. It's a little bit more expanded. Now that's part of the on-device intelligence feature. We also have another feature when it comes to device intelligence. Now when I launch Siri, so hey, what's the weather like today? It's currently partly It is going to in fact act much faster because now Siri is taking stuff and processing it on the device. Instead of setting everything to the cloud, it's doing everything on device. So it's on device processing. Siri is simply going to be fast. Now we also have a brand new uh, translation feature. So we already had this app here known as the Translate application, but now we have a live translate feature that makes conversations flow naturally across languages. So here I can translate from, for example, French to uh, English, okay? So you can see if I tap over here, I can tap, I can say hi, how are you? I can tap on go and you'll see we have the immediate translation here. I can enter text by talking. I can go to the conversation mode. So this application certainly has been improved as well. And of course we do have a bunch of other features I want to cover in this video, but it's a little hard to demonstrate them because it's brand new. There's not much going on. But if I do go into my Maps application, let me just launch the Maps application. Basically, you can see what's new in the map, Maps application. We, we're going to have more details on just about everything, including the navigation. And then we have these new features. But the map is going to look much more detailed as you zoom in. Look at that. You know, it's got so much information. You'll be able to see the traffic light location and all that stuff when you start the navigation uh, process. But again, Faster maps, more detailed maps. And also, very soon, we are going to be getting three-dimensional experiences when you're when you're doing city driving with the iPhone or if you're using the car, CarPlay, you are going to see the real world as you're traveling it. You're going to see arrows on the actual street view in the maps. And of course, we have some new privacy features. I'm not going to detail those. You can read about those on their website. The health app has been improved. The Find My app has been improved. The Apple TV app has been improved. There's a lot of stuff that has been improved in the background as well. But I did show you things that are visually uh, obvious in this video. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know. For now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right?